I think that Blackpool is it's a variety town. The, there's always a buzz, there's always an excitement, and that's provided by the fact that you don't always know what you're going to get in Blackpool. You don't always know whether they're going to really, sometimes you will have to work really hard to get the laughs. They just like the entertainment. I don't think they like anything smart, I don't think anything clever. They just want, basically, just entertaining, and that's Blackpool. Blackpool is really the greatest show town in the world. Blackpool, that's what it is. Blackpool is the heart of show business. If you ever perform in Blackpool or get your name in lights in Blackpool, then you, you, you're very successful, you've made it. Las Vegas of the North. This is the Welcome Archway, and the sort of thing you'll find on nearly all the main roads leading into Blackpool. It's just to remind you that you've arrived at your holiday destination, for here's a town with an ever-open door, and these are the signposts that guide you in. Blackpool's a great town. It's been very good to me and my family. All my children started off in show business here and I had my first break here uh, way back in 1970 um, when I appeared at the Central Worker Men's Club uh, with uh, a well-known local singer called Johnny Duffy and um, ever since then it's sort of way my career has kept coming around to Blackpool. 77 I did the South Pier with the Black Abbots, Russ Abbott and the Black Abbots. 79, we appeared on the North Pier with the Crankies, Les Dennis, Russ Abbott. We had four empty seats in five months. I came here in 1978, my first summer season, at the South Pier, which was a big comedy pier then. I was with uh, uh, Candlewick Green, Neville King, a ventriloquist, the magician and myself. My history with Blackpool go goes back a long, long way to 1954. I played the Queen's Theatre uh, along the promenade there and uh, believe it or not, 1954 and it's now 2000, 2012 and every year I've played Blackpool somewhere, one in some theatre, this theatre, that theatre, nightclub, wherever, but every year since 1954 I've played somewhere in Blackpool. How long now? 1979, 80 season was when we first uh, did our major show in Blackpool. Um, Can I just interrupt, we'll yeah. go before that. What were it? About oh, 1976, yeah, 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 yeah. We, did, we did the Sands Club. Yeah, we did. Uh, Won a talent comp. Yeah, we did. Oh, the what, Sands we did? Club. Won a talent comp. With Jackie. Uh, that's right, and we did a week there. Yeah, we did. And that's uh, when we started in Blackpool. That's right, yeah. Well, I'm a Blackpool lad, so uh, uh, I love Blackpool. I've got Blackpool written right through me like a barrel rock. I'm associated with the, 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 the thing that, that a love that keeps Blackpool going as much as anything else, which is entertainment. History of the Blackpool for me is uh, 18 years ago, I entered a, a talent show at the Viking on the seafront there, and uh, it was the uh, Search for a Star talent show. And um, from that, I ended up uh, winning the, the competition, and that's roughly how I got into show business. Well, apart from coming here as a child, which I obviously used to love doing, um, it's the variety capital of Great Britain, no matter what anyone says. Me and Dan and Roy, with, with, with the North Pier, it was in 1970, oh, about right, the early 80s anyway, and uh, I, first, I first came here. I was at a club called Leighton Institute, which is just around the corner, and I, I played there then the following year, I was on the pier with Roy, so. It's not a lot of, lot of years, it must be 30 years now or something. I think that Blackpool has an energy about it. If you go in any hotel or any pub or anything, you'll find a, an act on, performing, mm. learning the craft. I've been here 20 years in 2012, so that's what, 1990 I came here. That, I don't know if that works out. Comedy's better strength than maths, to be honest. Loved the place, absolutely. Fell in love with it. Comics, comic. It's a, it's, a, it's a comedy place. Where else in the world can you walk around with a pair of plastic tits on the plastic arse? and people just don't take a blind bit of notice. If you did that in your own town, you'd be arrested within seconds. And if it's in you, and there's a bit of show business in you, you want to be involved in Blackpool. When I came here, it was still the thriving entertainment town. We still had six week summer season shows, 32 week summer season shows, theater on South Pier. It was the mecca of, of entertainment. I think my earliest memory of doing shows here was at the Talk of the Coast. They had in 1996, they, I mean, I think they run it, still run it to this day, they do like a talent search every year, search for a star, and uh, I ended up winning it. When I first came to Blackpool, uh, 54 was just a, a week's variety, with Frankie Vaughan topping the bill, and a comedian called Joe Crosby from Wigan, he was on the bill, I was, well, my name was just a little bit bigger than the printers. I remember, I remember stripping off 
but I would run into the sea naked. That was how I celebrated. But I was young then, and I could do that kind of thing. <laughs> there were about uh, 10 people in the audience, because in the winter, those days, the landladies used to fly south for the winter with the swallows. And so we had, uh, I think we had about six taxi drivers, t two deck chair attendants who didn't quite make it. Oh, we had, I remember there was one very celebrity, the man who brings the seagulls in at night. The one who counts them in and sees that they're all in for the night. So there were about uh, 11 people in, yeah, most nights. And then, of course, like Tommy said, went on to the North Pier. North Pier, Pier to the Opera House, to the Grand. Yeah. And we've been doing those three things for the past sort of, well, 50 years we've been in the business now. So, you know, we've been doing them on and off through I, them years. I just need to interrupt again. I'm not the original Bobby. No. Uh, Tommy's had a few Bobbies. Yeah, I have. He's uh, the fifth one, actually. I'm the fifth Bobby. Yeah. I've only been with him two years. I'm That's only right. 34. He's only, yeah. Mm. Just don't want to put that point. I want to put Across. that point right. In the Grand Theatre. I have to say, I have a favourite venue in Blackpool. I have to I say it, the Grand, just because I'm... Oh, I'm so attached to the place. I've been done so many pantomimes. I, must, I was trying to work out how many shows I must have done here. It must be going towards a thousand shows that I've done in this theatre now. Which, and when you see the names we've performed here before, as you walk around the building, all those posters. There's one there. You know, some of the names on these posters are, j are just fantastic. But then you go back through history, and you've got the likes of you know Stan Laurel and people like that all performing in this theatre. And the thought that they've walked up the same steps and walked onto the same stage as I have, it's, it's great. So the town's been very, very good to me. And I've stayed since, you know, I'm from Liverpool, but after 78, my first summer season, which was like the Las Vegas of show business, you might say, I just love the town and I've stayed here ever since. Well, you've got to remember that, that most of the shows I do now uh, feature people who've been stars for quite a while. The, whose careers were moulded and created in, in Blackpool when Blackpool was looked upon as the Las Vegas of, of England. As I say, it's like the postcards. Where else in the world can you get po postcards? It's very suggestive. Oh, look at the tits on that. You know, you don't get, you don't get that anywhere else. It's here, Blackpool. It's, it's, it's a massive fun house. But for comedians like me, when I arrive, I have to start looking at things and saying, hang on a minute, the Golden Mile, seven mile long. Who measured that? <laughs> and if you didn't do a Blackpool summer season, you, 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 you weren't credible. So, I mean, even the stars of today, uh, if you look at Mick Miller and Joe Longthorne and Joe Pasquale and Bradley Walsh, Bobby Davro, they were all support acts to Morecambe and Wise, Cannon and Ball in Blackpool. And it was, it's always been a stepping stone on, on the way up the ladder to the heights and glory of television. Summer season at the Central Pier with um a big variety bill, and we ran right through, right from, from Whitson, Whitson Tide, right through to the autumn, right through to November, twice nightly, three times on a Thursday, I think, three times, on a, I think it was Thursday, I think, a Wednesday or Thursday. I did a few summer seasons, did a summer season at the Tower, which was brilliant. In fact, that summer season, I was working at Camelot Theme Park during the day, just down the road, and then I'd travel up and do a show at the Tower, and then rush over to the North Pier. And I was on at the North Pier as well with uh, Bernie Clifton doing a summer season there as well. So like doing three different summer seasons all at once. It was about that time, that over in the 2005, something like that, 2006, that was about that time where I decided that, look, I've got to, something's got to give here. And I packed in at Camelot then and became full-time just doing the, the stand-up circuit. A lot of the comedians here, um, just I just find them absolutely hilarious. I, I've had quite a bad year this year, so it's been good to come to work and like get a, a good laugh and everything. Tony Joe's in the house. Uh, this is your, oh, it's Halloween, isn't it? <laughs> there you go. That's the Halloween message from the producer right there in your face. <laughs> this is your 15 minute call. Our very first, if you like, our major summer season, which is 1979, 70, 80, when we came to Blackpool, we sold the place out, 1,800 seats, twice nightly, right the way through for 20-something mm. weeks or whatever it was, and they just took to us, uh, and Cannon and Ball were born. Does he do requests? Hey, does he do requests? If I know it, he'll sing it. <laughs> I've lived here for now for about 12 years, and it's a great place, there's plenty to do in the winter and the summer. And uh, it's just got a really wonderful, there's nowhere like it in the country, Blackpool, there isn't. You know, I've played summer seasons 
uh, like everywhere you can think of Scarborough, Bournemouth, you know, Torquay, everywhere in the country there's nowhere like Blackpool. You know, you're talking of in, in any other seaside resort, and I've worked in some, their season ran from March to 1st of September when the kids go back because Blackpool had the illuminations, it would give you an extra 12 week season. So any acts that were wanting to work all year, it was easier to come and get a long summer season in Blackpool than to do 10 weeks summer season in Bournemouth or, or Rill or somewhere like that and then have to go out and do other work. Blackpool was a, a guaranteed work for 36 weeks, which is why people came back. But it's a bit like, it's a stigma now. And it, it, it's, the thing about Blackpool is it's, it'll never go away. It's like the London Palladium. When I first started in the business and I had ambition, um, everybody wants to do the London Palladium. But the London Palladium didn't mean a thing if you didn't do a summer season in Blackpool. Blackpool summer season was giant uh, because, it, first of all, it's 16 weeks long. And up until about 10 years ago, um, it was six nights a week. I mean, Cannon and Ball filled the Opera House, 3,000 seats, twice nightly, six nights a week for 18 weeks. I mean, that's 42,000 people a week to see one show. Not much room for building sandcastles here. Believe it or not, this is the beach, the central beach in the height of the season. But if there's not enough room on the beach, try one of the three piers. North, central or south, they all provide a round of entertainment and pleasure. Coupled with the unique experience one usually finds on a luxury liner. In the early days, what it used to be with Blackpool, it used to be... Bolton, two weeks holiday. Bury, two weeks holiday. Blackburn. Oldham, two weeks holiday. Blackburn, two weeks holiday. And that's how it used to work. So you had solid northern audiences. And so consequently, you had that audience that was, they come for two weeks and they let their hair down. Well, a Blackpool audience is, is, is very show orientated. They come to Blackpool uh, on their holidays. They come for, noted for fresh air and fun where Mr. and Mrs. Ramsbottom came here with Albert, their son. But they come to Blackpool for a holiday, but they also come to see the shows. Uh, and so it's a, they're very show-minded, the people who come to Blackpool. They actually like, they love variety shows. People from all walks of life come to Blackpool, um, you know, and, and, and all parts of the country. And it's just like a gathering point for uh, people who want a good time to the number one resort for entertainment and leisure. I mean, when we started, you see, you started in a pub, in a working men's club, Hi. from a working men's club into a nightclub, yeah. from a nightclub into theatre, and then if you were lucky, into TV. Mm. And that's how, that's, that was your apprenticeship. See, that doesn't exist now. You see, I don't remember all them days. No, because he's my fifth Bobby. Because I'm the fifth Bobby, you see. But my other four Bobbies do. Don't worry about I that. I came right from the Labour Exchange right into this. Mm. It was fantastic. Throwing him right in the deep end. He's done all right. Yeah. He's done all right. Rock on, Tommy. See? Mm. Yeah. 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 She's dead! Ah. She's dead! She's dead! She's dead! She's dead! Shut up, you ah. idiot! Shut up! People used to come to Blackpool um, for their holidays because they could afford it. And one have you and all the television stars used to come here, you'd have five, six, seven, eight shows, all straight from the West End. That doesn't happen now, but still people come. Uh, they like Blackpool, they like the, uh, the lights, especially the lights, especially the illuminations. Uh, they don't come for the weather. Well, they're coming from all over the country and they're coming to enjoy themselves. It's like a holiday, holiday uh, camp crowd, really, you know. They're coming away for a week. They've got a few quid to spend. They want to go out, have a drink, have something to eat, and have a laugh. You had all these entertainers used to come here. You, uh, there, was, there was five major shows on. So you, when you came to Blackpool and you had a couple of bob in your pocket, you had to find out which, which show you were going to see. You couldn't see them all. Well, there's good and bad, I have to say, about a Blackpool audience. The, the, the bad side is they've, they've seen it all. You know, they, they, especially what tends to happen in Blackpool, you get the opening night audiences, which is, tends to be a lot of the locals, a lot of the hoteliers. And they, they, so some of them, especially someone like myself who's performed here for so many years, they kind of go, oh, go on then, what have we got for new? And you don't have a lot new, then they, they, can, they, they can be tough, they tough to win over. You had one show, you only had enough money, so you only had one show to go and see. So you had to be the best of what you were, in as much 
that you had to put on the very best of shows. And then once they you got those out of the way in the first week, you then your second and third and so forth, the audience is generally speaking brilliant. But there's a uniqueness to Blackpool that, that people come and think they can they can let their hair down a little bit, and most of them do, without any bad reputation at all. They come, they have a laugh, they have a giggle. You get the odd idiot, but you get that in any town, and whether it's a visitor or a resident, you're still going to get that. But don't forget, Blackpool's the home of fun and gaiety, and this atmosphere is created in no small way by the visitors themselves. And I think there's a nostalgia with everybody's come here with their grandchild, wants to bring their grandchild, and I think that follows through through the years that everybody wants to bring someone to Blackpool. What's unique about a Blackpool audience is the smell. Um, it's a sort of a mixture between uh, euphoria, happiness, uh, damp and uh, armpits. Well, you can take the mickey out of anything, you know, take the mickey out of the pleasure beach, the prom, the beach, drunks. <laughs> you know, because we have the, the lot right through. It, it goes right through the board. You know, the wife, the wife, the, the mother-in-law, whatever. It used to be the mother-in-law, not so much now. When you go back over the years and comedians were cracking jokes about uh, seaside landlords, for instance, you know, or if they were cracking jokes about uh, the beach or the tide, you know, people say, no, you come here in the summer, brilliant. Don't come in the winter. I should bring a pickaxe. I think they, they come here expecting to, to get a laugh and to be entertained. Um, so they're, they're expecting the quality and the standard to be quite high. The audiences can be uh, quite dear here if you're not all that funny, you know, even if you are funny. I remember uh, two old dears uh, meeting uh, two other old dears who were staying at the same guest house and they couldn't get in to see a particular show and they met each other. One was coming out of the show and the others were going in and they said, what's the comedian like? And one of them said, he's all right if you like laughing. And so the beauty of working in Blackpool is meeting other comics who can give you so much advice and so much help just because they've been through it themselves. I've learned an awful lot from people like Roy Walker, Mick Miller. As I say, I did my first summer season here and a ventriloquist who, who was a big name then, uh, Neville King, he taught me how to dress on stage, uh, stage presence, how to time a gag, how to walk on stage. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's taught me a hell of a lot, you know. We all work for a living. We get one or two weeks holiday a year. That's the Brits. And you've got to pick a place to go and you've got to say, right, we've got 150 quid. We're there five days, right? Where are we going to stop? What are we going to eat? You know, you can get, you've got the, the kids will want to go on the donkeys, they'll want to go on the ghost train, they'll want to go on the roundabouts. Sitting around and sunbathing may be all right for mum and dad, but for the kids, it's action all the way. And once again, their requirements are taken care of. For the tiny tots, a ride on the donkey never fails to thrill and amaze. And we all know that. We all know that. We're all like arms around each other. We all know we have so much money and so much time. And that's what Blackpool's all about. It's a fun place. Everybody laughs here. If you come here and you can't have a good time, just go home and strangle yourself. But audiences in Blackpool very down to earth. A lot of people in the north are quite down to earth. We get a lot of people from the south coming to Blackpool as well. But um, I mean, the spirit, the the the, um, the togetherness in Blackpool, people are. It's funny. There's, all, there's lots of characters and people where people can get comedy from. You know, and everyone's a comic in Blackpool. What are you doing now? This is Shirley Bassett. Our first day doing Shirley Bassett in person is Shirley Bassett in 1976. Um, I was uh, I used to dress up, dress up nice, these props and sort of um, put frocks on and sketch and different things and wigs and false dress and things. So it was a bit of a cartoony type thing, really, an animated sort of thing. Then I found that it, it was um, better if I didn't use the props. I used my voice, so that's what I do. I just use my voice now, and uh, I don't use props anymore. And uh, so, Sally Bass was the first in person to ever do it. For me, the main, the main interaction for me is, is seeing something in the audience that I know everyone else is thinking, but hasn't got the nerve to say it, and I'll say it. For someone like me who's been in the business 18 years, just trudging up and down the country, and then the next thing, you're stuck in a traffic jam in Blackpool, and you're seeing your face staring back at you from the back of a bus, and you're thinking, Craggy, you know, that, that's me. And, uh, 
and it's just suddenly hits you that um, how important um, Blackpool is, not just to the people that come here, but people who are working here as well. We, had, we have a curtain at the back of the stage, and it looks like a wall, but it's a curtain. And we had a woman a couple of weeks ago who thought it would be fun to run on stage while I was working, do a handstand on the wall, which wasn't a wall, it was a curtain, which you can't script that, you can't write it, you can't put that in any, no one will ever do it again, but it was just funny. I knew what was happening before I could stop her. She'd gone like that, and then like that. The big crowds aren't here anymore for the theatres. I mean, when I first started, it was twice nightly. You'd, you'd do 6.10 and 8.45, and they'd both be full. And of course, Blackpool, it was, it's like the Las Vegas of the North. Unfortunately, it has deteriorated a little bit over the last few years, and that's because they've had no money. I don't blame the county council for this. I blame the government. Well, you know, all right, they blame the weather, don't they? Say, oh, well, they don't get the weather. Now, that's a load of cod swallop. This place here could be thriving. Just needs some money spending on it. All the, all the places abroad now, it's cheap flights and, you know, so, um, of course, now people have got a budget and, you know, if they're going to stand on the prom in the wind all day. What's happened with Blackpool is, like any seaside town in England, people now go for £100, pounds, they can go abroad and guarantee sunshine. That's the trouble. In our day, when we started, well, no, when he started, because of the fifth Bobby, but when he started, you did summer season for 18 weeks. Now you do one night. Ladies and this is your half hour, or you had to do Oh, it. leave it out. Sorry about that, Lady. I mean, that's your business. That's what, your what business. What does that mean? It's a half Mr. hour Callum? call. It means that we've got 35 minutes. Thank you, love. Guaranteed sun, a euro for a pint of beer. You know, you've, you've got all that to, you know, 50 quid for the flight. If you're coming from the Midlands to Blackpool, it's going to cost you 50 quid in petrol. The likes of arenas have taken over, for, for certainly for comedy. <clears throat> and TV's changed so much now that to still be in Blackpool performing is still a great honour. And that's what brought me to Blackpool, the fact that it was the mecca. It was where I'd seen all the shows as a kid. It was just the place to come and get your face seen and hopefully get a bit of a name for yourself. Unfortunately, because of the economic climate at the moment, things are a bit tough. To be fair, the recession was good for Blackpool in the first few years because people couldn't afford to go abroad so they came here and it's good because I think those people that have come back to Blackpool and didn't go abroad have thought wow we've forgotten how good it was will come back they just haven't got any money at the moment but it's October uh, the I'll tell you now the recession is officially over it's turning around and we're on the way up the whole country bosh I want the change off because you said, if you asked me how Blackpool's changed, I said, well, how have they changed? You went, I don't no, know. I don't. But it's changed. Mm. It had to do. It had to do. Now, I was on the big one yesterday. <laughs> really? <laughs> she were, so she you were, met the wife, she were very anyway, good. So. <laughs> she was very good. When I was first starting out at that Blackpool talent show, um, I didn't really have enough money to get home from the, from the show. And in them days, it was first and second got through to the next round. And in the heat, heat number one, uh, I come second. So roughly I got 20 quid. And that was my fuel to get back home, really. I was with petrol money home. One of my best pieces of improvisation was I got this little lad up on stage. And I said to him, I said, what are you getting for Christmas? Do you know what you're going to get yet? And he went, yeah, I'm going to get a remote-controlled submarine. I said, remote-controlled submarine? I said, remote-controlled submarine? And I thought he was making it up. He ignored him at the time. And then I started thinking about it, I looked on the internet and found out you can actually buy them, remote control submarines. When I found that out, I couldn't help thinking about that poor kid stood on some pond outside Blackpool on Boxing Day, just going... And his dad going mad. I told him not to press dive, Billy. All the other boat owner clubs, the model boat club, going, what have you got there, Dad? There's a submarine. Where is it? It's there somewhere! Great memories. Unfortunately, um, uh, this gentleman died last week, uh, Johnny Gallimore, who was one of the Landau drivers. And my first summer season, I was on South Pier and he was sat outside one windswept, raining night. And I'm walking off and he said, is there any in, Mick? I said, there's about 400 in. He said, well, you're in a funny game show business. He said, if there's no one in that theatre, he said, you don't have anything to eat. He said, if no one gets in the back of this, I can eat the horse. This is a true story. We're doing the North Pier. I mean, you weren't with me then. No, I've heard it. You're the fifth book. I know, but I heard this. I heard. Sorry? I heard about it. Oh, right. Okay, sorry. And uh, I were only 10 at the time. 
My dad well, told me. My dad told oh, me. Okay. Because he remembers you. Right, right. Anyway, so, because um, he said he's the man that everybody hates. Aye. Okay. Can I he? got you, yeah. Anyway. Right. It's very difficult to do this interview when I look at the post that says the amorous prawn. It's very <laughs> difficult for me. Anyway. It's the wind, wind blows. So, um, how can the prawn be amorous? Hello there. I like spontaneous things. There was a case actually tonight where I was, I was pulling, a, I do a bit where I do this balloon modelling spoof. And I was pulling, extending the balloon and it made like a big boom, boom, with the vibration on the microphone. So I did a quick um, name that tune with the audience, which was good fun, because it was boom, boom. And it was Jaws was the answer, because when you get it moving faster, boom, 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 boom. What we're doing is, we're doing the North Pier, and uh, we use a kerfuffle at the back. Well, what's that is? So we finished the show, and the usher come around and said, there's a guy been laughing that much. We've had to take him to hospital. He's had a heart attack. And he's died. Because he was laughing that much. And that's true. Isn't it, Tom? <laughs> a week later, we get the letter, the woman says, we came to see show, my husband died, and thank you very much, because he died very happy. And that's very true. Am I right? <laughs> Stop it. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, you're right. In the old days of show business, uh, all the, the artists and dancers and all the cast of all the shows were invited to the Sand Hills in the middle of the summer season in August uh, because Tommy Steele, who was one of the biggest stars on the planet at the time, challenged Leonard Rossiter of Rising Damp fame, who was working here at the Grand Theatre in a play, to a duel. And at midnight, uh, 500 people, dancers, cast and all that, went down. There was a big barbecue, a bonfire. And uh, they pulled out the swords and they had the, the fencing stuff on because they were both experts. And they actually had a, a fencing duel at midnight on the sandals. I mean, unbelievable. Because it's just, it's just old school and Blackpool's got this, like, especially of um, their time, like, I think in the, the mid 60s and 70s, Blackpool was a place to be. Like, instead of like the X Factor or Britain's Got Talent, people would get spotted on the piers or in theatres like this. Well, it certainly helped me being living here in Blackpool on my kids. Uh, it's, uh, it's a great town for entertainment and uh, it's been very, very good to me. It was something that Blackpool, I don't know, it's hard to explain what Blackpool did for us. <laughs> what? what? I don't remember them days I because I'm the fifth, the, the fifth Bobby. I'm quite new really, you see, so he remembers all I do, this. I, I have to do. I, I'm the, do you realise I'm the only I'm the only person in show business who's been hated for fifty years? Yeah, they don't like him. They Nobody don't like likes him. him. Nobody likes me. I don't. Remember it. The audiences, the, the crew that you work with in the theatre, the people in general have been absolutely fantastic. And I think that speaks a lot for Blackpool itself. It does bring people together and that people have a common interest in whether seeing a show or going on the rides or whatever. They're all there for the same reason, that's the attraction. Well, it's everything, isn't it? I've been everywhere. I've been doing this job 44 years, you know, and Blackpool's my... I came here 24 years ago for a bottle of milk. I've been here ever since. It took to me. Somebody's seen me and said, oh, I like what he's saying, you know. He's pulling no punches. He's down to earth. He's gritty. He's basic. And I like that. Blackpool was very important to me because, as I said, people come from all over, all over, all over the world, but mostly all over, from all over the United Kingdom, all over Britain. People come from England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, everywhere from different towns, the Wakes Weeks, the Scots Weeks, the, the, the different, they come from all over. Therefore, you're playing, to, you're playing to a different audience each week. Each week is a different audience entirely, and they come from different parts of the country. So when you go back to playing, when I first played the House of Terror, Glasgow Empire, I was, I was, I was as scared as anybody else would be, but they'd already seen me in Blackpool, so I was, I was, I was assured of a good welcome in Glasgow and this goes for everywhere else, it goes from London, uh, from the south of England, wherever you play somewhere in Britain they've all been to Blackpool. So it's very important that you, uh, you, you, uh, you do well in Blackpool because if you do well in Blackpool it means you do well everywhere. <laughs>